Hi, today I'm going to show you how to make brownies. Nothing beats homemade brownies fresh from the oven. They're super quick and easy to make and you can get the batter made in about the time it takes your oven to heat up. So the ingredients are pretty simple. You need two ounces of unsweetened chocolate, a half a cup of butter, a cup of sugar, two eggs, three quarters cup flour, three quarters cup baking powder, and you need to make sure your baking powder is fresh. If you don't remember when you last bought it, it might be time to buy another can. Quarter teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of vanilla. You can also add walnuts, chopped walnuts, uh, chocolate chips, peanut butter chips, any other kind of thing like that that you might want to add to your brownies as well. So let me start by turning my oven on. I'm going to turn it on to 350 degrees. So while that's heating, We'll start our chocolate and butter melting. I've got two ounces of chocolate in the pan here, along with a stick of butter or a half cup of butter. I'm going to put that on low heat to melt. You could also melt that in the microwave if you prefer. I'm going to get my pans ready. You need to grease and flour your pans. You could also use just a eight inch square pan with some wax paper in the bottom of it or I like to use my cast iron skillet. I like to use a number five or a number six. Uh, I'm going to use uh, some little heart pans. I want to make some little hearts as well today. So I'm going to use my number five since that's a touch smaller. Otherwise, I would probably go with my number six. Now I've already greased the skillet, but it's important to flour as well. So I'm just going to sprinkle a little flour in the bottom of the pan and you know, with cake pans, you usually just tap them to move the flour around. I find that a little hard with my cast iron skillet, so I actually use a mallet to help move that flour around and lightly. just tap it lightly. And then I can just go like that to get rid of the excess flour right over the trash can. So I have greased and floured my skillet. I have that ready. I can start assembling the rest of my ingredients. And my chocolate and butter is melting here. We'll give that an occasional stir. That won't take that too long to melt. Okay. So for my ingredients, I'm going to put two eggs in a bowl. And I'm going to add my sugar. And when you add your sugar, you add it a third of a cup at a time. That allows you to beat the sugar in better. So I'm going to just give my eggs a quick mix and I'm going to start with my first third of a cup of sugar. And I actually have a third of a cup scoop in my sugar so I'm going to do one scoop and I'm going to beat this in. And what you're doing is you're allowing the sugar to dissolve. Otherwise you end up with grains of sugar in your brownies. So mix that in and dissolve a little bit and we'll put in our second cup, or our second third of a cup rather I should say. And we'll stir this in. And we'll mix this for a moment and we'll add that last third of a cup. And like I said, the goal is to allow your sugar to dissolve. So we've got our final third of a cup. And that gives me one cup of sugar. So we're just going to mix this in. could use a mixer here if you prefer. It's not that much work. I usually just use a whisk to stir it in, less to dirty. And let me just keep an eye on my chocolate here. We don't want that to boil. That's almost melted. So we'll just stir that. Probably, by the time I'm done whisking this 
butter or this uh, egg and sugar together, that should be ready. So there's still a few grains of sugar in there. And if you're not sure, you can always just run your finger along the side of the bowl and you can feel whether there's still sugar grains there or not. So. Now, as I said, you can add walnuts to these brownies. You can add additional chocolate chips if you want them super chocolatey. You can add peanut butter chips, you can add white chocolate chips, uh, other nuts, whatever other nuts are, you know you like, you can add to the brownie mix as well. And yes, our chocolate's just about done here. I can actually turn that heat off. The residual heat is enough to melt that. And we're just going to stir this for another moment until that finishes melting. And again, you could microwave the chocolate if you prefer, as opposed to using the stove top, uh, whatever is easiest for you. going to come back and give my sugar and eggs another quick stir. <clears throat> and our sugar is just about all dissolved. If you look at what's coming up on the side, you can see there's not too many grains of sugar left in there. So I'm going to pour in my melted chocolate. And I'm just going to pour this in slowly to the side, and I'm just going to stir it in. And I'm just going to use a little spatula to get the rest of that out of the pot. Now, do not be tempted to lick the spatula or the spoon. This looks like good chocolate, but it is unsweetened chocolate, and it is very bitter to the taste. Now, of course, if you have somebody over that you don't particularly, or you want to pull a good joke on, give them the spoon to lick. <laughs> uh, but it is very bitter. So I'll set that aside. And we're just going to stir that there. We can get rid of our whisk at this point. Now I'm going to go ahead and add my vanilla, a teaspoon of vanilla, and we'll stir that in. And the only thing left to add is our flour and baking powder and salt. Gonna give this another quick stir before we add that in. So, my flour, I've got a half cup scoop here. As always, I've stirred up my flour a little bit so it's not packed down. So, since I have a half a cup scoop, that's going to be a half a cup and a half of a half. If I basically level it off so I've got flour from the bottom to the top here, that's gonna be a half of this measuring scoop. And I'm actually going to take and put my baking powder. I need it three quarters of a teaspoon and some salt. I only need a quarter teaspoon of salt. Just a little bit. And I'm just going to stir these right in with that last little bit of flour to help mix them up a little bit. And we can dump all of that right in there. You can sift them all together if you really prefer, but that works as well. Uh, if I was adding nuts or chocolate chips or any other kind of chips, I would stir these in, add these in with the flour, and just stir this to mix. And we'll be able to put it in the pans and bake it. And if you notice, my oven just got up to temperature, and my batter is ready. 
and as I told you, it takes about the same time for your oven to preheat as to make this batter. So, I want to do a couple of these cute little heart guys. So I'm just going to take and put a scoop in each of them. You never want to fill your pans up too full halfway is about best. The batter usually rises a little bit. If you go more than halfway, it's going to overflow and explode and cause issues. So about halfway, those are probably a little full even. Okay, so we've got our heart pan ready to go in. I'm sorry. And we can pour the rest of the batter into our baking pan. Just going to clean that spoon off here. And this will just pour straight into the pan. Now, usually with bread dough, I make sure I scrape the pan really well. You don't want to race that bread dough. With brownie dough or brownie batter, I always like to leave a little batter in the pan because licking the spoon with the brownies is part of the fun of making homemade brownies. So, I'm going to put these in the oven. At 3.50 for the big pan will need 30 minutes. That little one is probably only going to need about 15. So I'm gonna check that little one in 15 minutes. And I'll see you back here then. Okay, it's been 15 minutes. Let's go ahead and check on our little uh, heart brownies here. The first thing I usually do is I try and just touch the top a little bit and I can feel that it's sinking, it's not springing back, and so I know that that means it needs a couple more minutes. So I'm going to put it back in there for about another three minutes and then I'll check it again. The other thing I'll do to check it is I can poke a toothpick in and see that the toothpick comes out clean. But if it doesn't spring back, I know that it's not even worth poking. Okay, I think our little pan of brownies are done. A good indication is that I can start to smell the brownies now. So I'm going to take them out and they seem a little firmer. Let's see, when we put a, yeah, when I put a toothpick in, it's coming out clean. So we'll let these set for just one minute and then we will pop them out of that pan. And we'll put our timer back on for about another 10 minutes for the rest of those brownies. I'll see you back here in a minute. Okay, it's been about 30, 35 minutes. I believe our brownies are about done. Let's take a look at them here. I think they look pretty good. They, they spring back a little untouched. It's coming out pretty clean, a little bit moist at the very bottom, but we don't want our brownies completely dry. We're going to let them set in the pan one to two minutes. Then we will run a butter knife around the edge of the pan and pop them out. Okay, I let my brownies rest a minute. I'm going to take a butter knife and I'm just going to run it around the edge of the pan. Make sure everything is loose. And then we are going to come over here. And you can turn these out onto a, uh, actually I think I prefer a plate over the cooling rack. So let's see what we get here. How's that? So our brownies are here, ready to eat. Again with the greasing and the flouring of the pan, they come out really nice and easy. And we've got a fresh batch of hot brownies ready for sampling. Oh, they're too hot to eat right now, I think. I'll just have to nibble on them. Very good.
I hope you've enjoyed these brownies. If so, you need to check out the channel for what to do with the leftover brownies. I'll show you how to turn them into baked Alaskas. Again, I hope you've enjoyed this. If so, please like and subscribe to our channel, and happy baking. Thank you.